hello everybody and welcome to the Wild Ginger Running live show. Tonight I'm going to be answering some really interesting questions, um, a bit of a Q&A on waterproofing things in your running pack, um, the best way to train for an ultra, strengthening your ankles and nutrition for ultra running. And then I'm gonna be telling you all about my weekend at the National Running Show where I met some patrons, woohoo. And let me just check that I'm streaming to live. Ah. options I don't think it's live oh public okay am I live I don't know how to check this on here, but if anyone can let me know, that would be great. Um, let's just see if anybody is joining us tonight and then I'll know if I'm live or not. Public. Yes, someone's watching. Hopefully that okay. means I'm live. Am I live? I don't know how to check this on here. Can but someone just anyone comment can let me and know? let me know? And I'll cut this bit. <laughs> I'll trim it. Yes, okay, I am live, okay. We'll start again, we'll start the show again. Um, basically, I've been interviewing people all week, um, like over Skype, um, using this program that I use, and um, I had it on Unlisted, so brilliant. Mallory Gabbert says, yes, you are live, so. That is great. Okay, I'm gonna sh start the show again. And the amazing thing about YouTube is that you can trim everything. Okay, so hello, good evening everybody, and welcome to the Wild Ginger Running live show. So tonight I'm gonna be answering some really interesting questions on waterproofing the things in your running pack, um, the best way to train for an ultra, strengthening your ankles, and nutrition for an ultra. And then I wanna tell you all about my weekend at the National Running Show where I met some patrons. Woo, here is a picture of us. Ta da there's me, there's Nigel, there's Guy, there's Alex, there's me, there's Darren, and there's Abby. And we also saw a few others as well, so I'll mention all of you guys later on. So that was where I was this weekend. Um, and what I was doing at the show was interviewing as many top runners as I could, including Barclay Marathon's completer and spine winner from a couple of weeks ago, John Kelly, and outright 100 mile and 24 hour world record holder, Camille Heron. Um, I also met Lazarus Lakes, the organizer of the Barclay Marathons. Um, everybody wanted a piece of him. It was absolutely madness. But anyway, more on the National Running Show later. I am gonna start with the Q&A because it is live and we are live, people. So, first question, there's, there's a couple of questions actually. Jill Fox, first of all, let me just get your question up, Jill. So Jill is running an ultra and she needs to keep her kit dry um, because her running pack is obviously not waterproof. Um, and in a similar vein, um, Chris Stringer wants to know how to keep his uh, phone dry. Um, when run, carrying it, um, carrying it in a running pack. So, um, so the answer to this is that you can get dedicated dry bags, which look um, a little bit like this. You can get really lightweight ones as well. This is a bit of a heavy duty one, and I've got my um, cooking stuff in here, um, and it's all ready to go. I just keep it in here. Um, and what you do with this dry bag is you squish all the air out, and then you turn it over at the top like so. I'll just move Jill's question out of the way there. Um, you turn it over like that and it's fully waterproofed like that. You just clip it at the front there. 
um, and it's quite handy to have lots of different coloured dry bags like this so that you can then remember what kit is in each thing. You can also get dry bags with a, um, a see-through panel at the front so that you can actually see what's in them because who is going to remember after 100 miles um, what they've put in each bag. So that's one way of waterproofing your kit. The other way is a bit more of a, a cheapy way and this is my preferred way is you keep these little bags. You can get big ones and small ones of these. I've never actually had to buy one because with the amount of kind of kit that I buy and you know food, various food items and things like that um, electronics and stuff like that you get given these all the time so save these and you can use them to waterproof things like your phone so just pop it in there da -da, waterproof phone seal it up like that. You can use sandwich bags as well, you know those Ziploc ones, but I find that the zip has an ever so tiny hole just at the end, so it's better if you get these ones like this. So that is good for waterproofing the phone. And you can actually still use the phone inside of this, so like I can go onto YouTube and it's still working when I press it. So. Um, there we go, you can still use it through a plastic bag. You don't have to get a dedicated, you can get dedicated phone um, cases and stuff that are waterproof, but you don't actually need that. You can just use um, a Ziploc plastic bag like this one. It's a little bit difficult to take photos because it is all a bit blurry, but um, I think you could just take it out of the bag for those occasions. Okay, so that is the answer to the first question. Um, yes, uh, just next question is, oh yes, no, I needed to say something else about that as well. Um, so, um, also sometimes I just put my mobile phone in a pocket of my rucksack because if it's just spitting slightly, not if it's torrential downpour, the iPhone 7 is actually water resistant. So I don't often will have to waterproof my phone. Even on the Cape Wrath Ultra, I didn't waterproof my phone because I was constantly taking it out and taking pictures as well. So um, just check that your phone is water resistant. I wouldn't I wouldn't advise going all day in a storm with your phone not waterproofed, but it, it can be done just if there's a little bit of light rain, you don't need to worry too much if you've got an iPhone or a water resistant phone. Okay, so the next question is Martin Seward and he would like some information on ankle strengthening. So he's got a bit of a, an involved question here. Um, basically he sprained his ankle and then he's broken it this is this is really terrible. Um, can anyone recommend? Um, uh, uh, well, uh, how do people cope with weak ankles? So, um, what do you do to strengthen up your ankles for trail running? So, I have got actually three videos on strengthening your ankles for trail running, and I've put them in the film description below. Um, so, basically, I know how you feel because I've sprained mine about probably um I sprained mine once and really annoyingly that was just walking I sprained it while I was just walking so I um was just walking along and I went over on it completely and then about three or four times afterwards whilst running on rough terrain I just completely went over on it again it was like it was suddenly really weak and it couldn't really it couldn't really deal with the same terrain as it used to be able to deal with so um what I did was um I just stopped running for about a month and then I did some walking and I went biking and just allowed it to recover and then I really gingerly started to test it out and I found that I went over it on it a few times when I was running on rough terrain so you could steer clear of rough terrain just for a little bit so not necessarily road running but more kind of like you know, canal towpath type of terrain you could do that for a month or so um, just to make sure that you don't go over on it when it, it is really susceptible the first few months after you've gone over on it really badly that's when ankles are the most susceptible so um I've got three films about ankle strengthening on my channel um, and a lot of them involve balance work. So there's one where you're standing on a pillow or a rolled up towel and you're just trying to hold your balance there. There's little moves that you can do like single legged squats as well. Um, there's the arabesque where you're standing on one leg and then you lean forward when you are with your arms out. Um, all those type of things. Also um, calf raises on the stairs and also standing just if you're in a queue or if you're boiling the kettle um, or if you're at work, you can just very surreptitiously just stand up and down on tiptoes um, as 
uh, if you're waiting for anything any anywhere in life just one legged stand up and down on tiptoes just to um, really hone your balance and to get your ankles stronger so do check out those three exercises they're in the description um, below this film um, and there's some they go from easy to slightly harder and um, they're, they're they're generally very straightforward so I hope that helps you. Um, and then Martin has another question, um, which is about minimal shoes. So he says he seems to go over um, less when he's made, when he's using a minimal shoe. So one with not as much cushioning um, because he thinks that he can feel the ground better underneath. But then he's worried about the longer distances. I mean, in less cushioned shoes, does that does that make a difference perhaps? So um that's a bit of a conundrum, isn't it? So you've got ankle problems, so you want to have a shoe with not too much cushioning so you can feel the ground underneath you. But then if you're gonna be running for a long time, then maybe you do need a little bit of cushioning at the same time. So what I would say is that you've got your really, really minimal shoes on one end and you've got your kind of really cushioned road shoes on the other end. So I would try and go for something a bit in the middle because you can get a really good trail shoe for multi-terrain so it's it's not got tons and tons of cushioning and it's not got a super stacked heel it's probably like uh five to seven millimeters of drop um but it's still got a bit of grip to it so you've kind of got a bit of an all-rounder so that's what i would go for in this case because you don't want to be suddenly going to a really minimal shoe and then um and then the lack of cushioning and support um really scuppering you at the same time but you don't want to really thick shoe that's not going to let you feel the terrain underneath you and then you're going to go over on your ankles more. So um, at the National Running Show I actually saw a couple of a new shoe from La Sportiva look, that looks really good for sort of that middle ground. Um, it's called the Jackal and it's seven millimeters drop um, and it's called, um, it's what they call a road to trail shoe. So it's kind of a road shoe but with a little bit less cushioning and it's got a bit of grip. It's got more grip than a road running shoe would have but it's not got quite as much shoe grip as um um like you know like the salomon's b cross like a trail a proper trail running shoe for really muddy stuff if you want a, a trail running shoe which is multi-terrain for a bit more muddy stuff then the last sportiva akasha looked really good at the show as well that has a six millimeter drop and some cushioning so if you add, if you go to your local independent running shop and you ask for a road to trail shoe or a multi-terrain shoe then you should be given a shoe with a little bit of cushioning and a little bit of grip, um, not too extreme one way or the other. So I hope that helps you, Martin. Okay, so the next question is from um, Brad. Ah, here we go. So the next question is from Brad Rush, who was wondering what my preferred method of training is for um, endurance in an ultra marathon. So is it time on your feet? Um, is it distance? Is it or is it heart rate training? Or is it a combination of those or something else altogether? So this is a really great question um, because um, I am a qualified personal trainer and I'm personally currently training for a 30 mile mountain ultra called the Man Manx Mountain Marathon on the 11th of April. If anybody would like to join me, um, Joss Naylor will be there handing out the prizes. So um, I personally um, when I'm training people and when I'm training myself um, with trail running I prefer to use time rather than distance um, because this is a fairer assessment of the effort that it takes you so it takes hills and it takes terrain into account so then I also combine that timing with HR heart rate um, because most people if they're left to their own devices will run every session too fast um, so you can use a heart rate monitor but actually perceived effort which is just monitoring how out of breath you are and whether you can hold a conversation is actually a really good indicator of where your heart rate is at um, so you don't even need a watch necessarily so basically to build endurance and strength for ultra running, you need to run 80% of your sessions at an easy chatting pace, which that is good news, isn't it? So for, for many people, this is the pace where you can just easily hold a conversation, chat. If you're running on your own, imagine that you're talking to someone and see and just assess for yourself whether you could get any words out. So those that's 80% of your workouts. And then for 20% of your workouts, 
Um, so for most people, this is like once a week um, ish, something like that. When you're um, a kind of a beginner to intermediate runner, that's kind of 20% once a week of your workouts. Um, you can start to boost your speed with a fast session like intervals or tempo work. So to sum up, I rarely use distance when training for an ultra, and I prefer to use time on the feet and perceived effort, basically HR, instead. I do get asked about training plans for ultras quite a lot, um, and there will be some generic training plans for up to 50k in my book, which is out next January, um, but it's always best to get a personal plan for the best results and to also reduce your chances of injury. Um, so I also do offer a coaching package on Patreon, so check out the options on offer at patreon.com slash wildgingerrunning. Um, and I also recommend personalised training plans from Dave Taylor at Foul Running Guide. He has written mine because I've got him to write me one because basically if I write one, I won't stick to it. If somebody else writes me one, I will definitely stick to it. So I've got Dave to write me one and it's really brilliant and I'm really enjoying it. So um, to get you, but if you don't want to splash out at this stage, like that's totally understandable. To get you rolling in the right direction, watch my Q&A film about how to train for an ultra on three runs per week. Um, and there is a link in the film description below so just click on the drop down arrow or the show more um the, click show more for details and it will just be in the description film description below it's called train for an ultra with three one runs a week and that will get you going with the structure that you need to train for an ultra um in a three runs a week okay so just gonna see if there's any questions so far. And if you have got a question on the live chat, hello everybody on the live chat, it's great to see you. And I will be talking about the national running show after after this question, which is the last question that I've got. Yeah, so after this question, I'm gonna be talking about the national running show. Um, and um, yeah, so if you have got a question, just type it in on the live comments and um, we'll see if we can get that answered for you. Um, you can test, test me, I'll have no time to prepare. Um, Guy Greatorex says, if you're running, um, if he's running on his own, he sings to himself while no one's around. Now that is a really good test of whether you are running in the right heart rate zone or not. So that is fantastic, Guy. Well done for doing that. Okay. And uh, Chris Stringer says, thank you for covering my question, Claire. No problems, Chris. I hope your mobile phone stays dry. Okay, so Ben Troughton, wants to know if, oh, let me just get his question up here. Okay, so Ben Troughton wants to know if anything has changed since my last video on nutrition for ultras, which was three years ago now, can you believe that? So I had to think about this on the train back home just, just earlier, and not really. <laughs> um, I, always, I also asked a load of people at the running the National Running Show about fueling for ultras this weekend. Um, stay tuned for more advice from pros like John Kelly and Camille Aaron coming throughout the year. Um, but basically, the main advice is these six things. So, first of all, number one, number one, you just wanna find out what you can personally stomach on an ultra because everybody is different. So you need to practice everything in training and I'll come on to that in a minute. So find out what you can personally stomach go down the shopping aisles and just try a lot of different things. Number two, try a mix of sweet and savoury items. So, um, because sometimes your taste buds change during an ultra, and if it's a really long one, you don't want to be stuck with gels and sticky, sweet, sickly things all the time. You'll really need a good bit of quiche or something on the way around. So, try and pack a variety of sweet and savoury things because you just never know what you're going to fancy at mile 40. So you could try peanuts, you could try cheese, like I like malt loaf as well, there's stuff like jelly babies, um, flapjacks are really good as well, um, a dried fruit like dried apricots are one of my favourites, um, and then like peanut butter and jam sandwiches, and you could also make your own homemade energy balls with like oats and chocolate and like chocolate chips, seeds and nuts and dried fruit, um, like bits of desiccated coconut in them. Um, and I have actually made a film about that with Anita Bean, um, which is, where is it? Ah, oh, I can't find it. Okay, I cannot find that, but I have put the link in the description below. Um, basically, I went to Anita Bean's house. She's the author of the, the Runner's Cookbook and I made these amazing energy balls with her and they are really delicious. 
So number three thing, test everything out in training. I did allude to this earlier, um, but just uh, try to avoid taking anything on new on race day because you might have an unexpected digestive problem with it. Number four, eat and drink little and often so that you're refueling with little bites and little sips to keep you topped up rather than having a really big sugar high and then a really big crashing low and feeling really full as well because that's really uncomfortable when you're running. Um, if you are if you have problems with this, then you could always set a little 20 minute fueling alarm on your watch if you're inclined to uh, not remember to eat and drink. Um, number five, caffeine can actually give you a boost towards the end of the race. Um, but you've definitely got to experiment with the dosage here on like caffeine gels and, and caffeine, like caffeine bullets, those little sweets you can get and, and anything with caffeine in. Um, experiment during training because everybody has a different sensitivity there. So it's really important because you could have a big crash. And then number six um, about eating and drinking, um, eat, it's really important afterwards as well. So to uh, make sure you fully hydrate, so just have like a pint of water and keep sipping at that before that you have your beer or alongside your beer, I probably would. And then eat or drink a carb or a carb and protein based healthy snack within two hours of finishing because this is the optimum time um, to replace uh, all the um, to replenish your muscles and um, it's the optimum recovery window. Um, so something like a, a chicken and salad sandwich um, or a hummus and falafel wrap with a bit of salad in. Um, um, other protein rich items include nuts so you could just have like a, a nutty bar. Um, if you drink milk also you could have um, a chocolate milk, um, a really good balance of carbs and proteins for recovery in there. And so I also really recommend um, The Runner's Cookbook by Anita Bean. Um, she's got tons of ideas in there for healthy fueling during ultras and also in training as well. Um, and she's also, really interestingly, she's got the latest scientific findings and advice on caffeine dosage and natural supplements like cherry and beetroot as well. So um, I did make some energy balls, as I mentioned earlier, with Anita, and the film is in the description below. So why not give them a go? They're really yummy. Okay, so those are the four questions I have answered. Um, and uh, Conrad's just um, come in from all the way from Michigan here. He says, I use Claire's training plans. Yes, and they are very easy to follow and work very well. Um, and it was surprised, he was surprised how well they worked on his la last half marathon. So that was worth it. Awesome, thanks very much. So yeah, if you fancy a training plan from moi, then go to uh, patreon.com slash wildgingerrunning and have a look at the options there. So, gotta do a couple of updates and thank yous just before I crack on with the news about the National Running Show, which was really awesome this weekend. Um, so I just wanted to say a big thank you to James Bassett because he has been doing my, um, he's been providing a timeline for me for um, when I do these long, um, hour long broadcasts and when I interview elite athletes as well. So um, I just wanted to say a big thank you to him because it's just really kind of him to always go and rewatch the film and um and really just make a timeline for everybody so that if you're watching later and you want to watch a certain bit or you want to watch a certain question then you can just go straight to the time where that question is asked so thank you very much to james bassett it's really super kind of you for doing that every wednesday um in a similar vein, I have had a fair few people suggesting that I edit um, some of the questions that I answer here into shorter films. Um, so I will try to get around to doing that with this one as well to just create like little short snippet, snippets of that evergreen content that hopefully will be more helpful and um, more accessible for people as well. So um, yeah, hope that helps you out if I chop up these films um, and pop them out. It's just like little minute long, um, little helpful uh, tips. Cool. So let's get on to the National Running Show where I saw this lovely lot. So let's get that picture up again. Where are you? Here we go. So so this is the National Running Show and we were, you can just see that we, all of us lot were on this stand here. Um, this is the We Run Trail stand um, at the Trail Zone. So um, a really cool lady called Jude 
put this all together and she organized loads of speakers at that stand including me um, and it was just a real hub and meeting point for everybody over the weekend so I kept coming back there the guys from trail running magazine were there as well um, and we just met loads of really cool trail running coaches and people who wanted to get into trail running and it was really really awesome um, so it was super nice to see everyone there and the really nice thing about the show was that or loads of people, patrons and just normal Wild Ginger Running followers just kept coming up to me and saying, oh, thank you for doing the channel. It's really helped me um, and it's really nice to meet you. And some of them wanted a selfie with me and some of them just wanted to say, yeah, thanks for all the info that you provide. So yeah, it was just really, really nice to meet everybody. And thank you so much for everybody who came and said that what I'm doing on the channel is good because, you know, sometimes you just think, oh my goodness, is it is it working? Do people really care? And yes it helps people so that is the main reason that I do this so uh, what else was I doing at the show well um, I've seen the film you know those films that I do where I ask every athlete the same question and then I chop them all together in a sort of a mashup so that each athlete answers that same question I've seen that they've gone down really popular um, like gone down really well on the channel so like um, like I did that at the Skyline Scotland um, so at the show the running show this weekend I decided to ask every single person that I spoke to, every athlete, um, 10 questions about ultra running. So I will make 10 films about ultra running. So they're all answering each question. Um, so the people, some of the like exciting people that I spoke to um, were John Kelly, who um, he was the 15th and most recent Barkley Marathons completer. Um, and he also won the spine race a couple of weeks ago. Um, um, and he's um, from the US and he now lives in Bristol. So I've chatted to him a couple of times on Skype, but it was just really Really, really nice to actually meet him face to face he was also um at the fireside lounge with the bad boy running guys um in the ultra zone um doing a q a as well so um everybody got to see john and, and meet him and it was a really nice kind of intro for him in the uk um and then the other athlete that i was really excited to meet was camille heron um she is coming back to the uk to do the centurion races 100 miler in april and she's also doing the utmb in august so hopefully i'll catch up with her there as well but Camille is a massive like she's an incredible incredible runner so she's um uh she's the outright 100 mile and 24 hour world record holder um for road run for track running um and she also has the women's record for trail running as well so she's she just cracks out like 100 miles at 7 minute 37 737 minute mile pace which is just quite frankly amazing <laughs> so it was really really awesome to meet her and um she has some really cool shoes as well <laughs> so look out for interviews with those guys um on the channel coming up um as they're part of this ultra series and also got answers from John Alban, who is a skyrunner and um, OCR champ. OCR means obstacle course racing. And um, I interviewed sports nutritionist Anita Bean again, and long distance runner Rob Pope, and Anna from the Running Channel. You know, Anna, who's the presenter on the Running Channel, interviewed her about ultras as well, because she's she wants to do Barclay someday. Crazy, crazy. She wants to do Barclay, so a few years' time, watch out for Anna. Um, and then um, a guy called Jay Amy, who came third at the Cape Breath Ultra when I was running it a couple of years back. Um, he's an adventurer. Um, and also multiple world record breaking trail running granny, Mimi Anderson. Um, got her tips as well and then I got some tips from a coach um, who I've not met before Rachel Henshaw from Mud and Miles and she specializes in the menopause so I just got a little bit of menopause information in there peppered through um, and I almost almost got an interview with Anna at Knuff, but she scarpered before I could catch her so she's she messaged me and she's going to film her answers herself and send them to me so we'll still get Anna in there hopefully um, Anna McNuff of Barefoot Britain fame um, if you don't know about Anna McNuff um, I will I'll, I'll I'll actually put a link to her film in the description below I forgot to do that so far but um she ran um the whole length of Britain barefooted um over the last year um and I ran with her from Coventry to Solihull in uh, I think it was October so um it was just amazing to meet her and run with her she's a totally inspiration person she's like um I, just, I love Anna McNuff she's amazing <laughs> um 
so yes, it will take me a while to edit all of that lot. Um, and I've still got some interviews from the UTMB and also from the Skyline Scotland to put out. So stay tuned for this ultra series on Wild Ginger Running later in 2020. I said that in a film voice. Cool. Fab. Okay. Lots of people are liking that there's going to be loads of great interviews coming up. Um, so, uh, what did everyone else like about the running show if you were there? Or if you didn't go, why didn't you go? And are you thinking of going next year? They're also doing um, another national running show in London, but it's on the 13th and 14th of June. And that's where my trail race is. So I, I, I just can't go. They asked me to speak there and I just can't go um, because I'm organising our own trail race, which is called the Neen Valley Races. And you can enter it on SI entries um now and um we've got a 10 mile race and we've got a 20 mile race as well so if you fancy doing a race in the east midlands it's in northamptonshire from fothering hay castle um quite near to where i live it's about half an hour south um then do come along because it's going to be brilliant it's like um really undul nice undulating easy trails it's really great for either beginner trail runners or more experienced trail runners that just really want a fast route like you know really test yourself going fast um and it's like uh through feet fields and disused railway lines and um, along uh, rivers and also that they, it goes through a few really picturesque um, l like um, light sandstone coloured villages like really ancient villages so it, there's a real mixture of terrains and there's a real mixture of views on those races so it's going to be really really awesome Saturday the 13th of June definitely definitely sign up for that it's um, on SI entries now and it's Neen Valley Races and Neen is N-E-N-E -E, Valley Races um, so yeah or just go on to um, or just google Neen Valley Races and it will come up our website will come up Cool. So what else happened at the running show? Yes, I really, oh, I'll sh I want to show you some pictures actually um, of, uh, before I chat about which patrons went, I just want to show you this girl. She is called C.P. Sketches and she was drawing pictures of um, the fireside chat with Lazarus Lake. So let me just put um, this other picture up of her. So this is a bit of a, more of a close up. Um, so these are really cool pictures. She was just sat there sketching while I was um, while I was sitting listening to the talk. Um, and the really funny thing is, Laz came in. Um, so let's just show you a film of Laz coming in. Um, I'll show you that again because you didn't see it. <laughs> so Laz came in and then he decided to... Oh, let's just get back to that. Okay, so Laz came in um, and like one of the first questions that he got asked was why haven't there been any women that have completed the Barclay Marathons yet? And he really, really controversially said that he thought that it was too difficult for them. Um, now, obviously this is true because so far the Barclay Marathons has been too difficult for all of the women that have tried it. Um, but there was this kind of giant like, woo from the audience. If you were there, every, like honestly, everyone just went woo like that. But basically, um, there's no way that Lazarus thinks that women can't do the Barclay Marathons. Like, that's insane. Like, he even said that he was hoping to, that Jasmine would apply, Jasmine Paris would apply, um, because he thought that she would have a good, like, a good crack at it. Um, but, um, but basically, he, he says it, I think, to kind of goad women into wanting to take part. So I think he says it as a bit of a challenge for the women so that they want to take part. Um, it just hit me up on the chat if you would like to do the Barclay Marathon. So for those of you who don't know, the Barclay Marathons is a crazy, crazy race in Frozen Head, um, Frozen Head uh, National Park in Tennessee. And uh, basically, it's 100 miles in 62 hours through this horrendous scrubland that somebody um, back in God knows when escaped from prison from. And in 48 hours, he only got a few miles away from the prison. It's that difficult terrain. It's really hilly. It's really, um, it, like, it's really full of briars and brambles and trees, and it's really hard to get through. So it's just an insane, insane race. Um, 
but so Laz thinks Laz is trying to get women to do it by goading them um, and so this is one of the things that he said at the running show they just have to do the same thing that men do which is cover 100 miles of running distance and I, I don't know why, the, I think that the physical strength aspect may, have, may play a role because it, you do do a lot of pulling on trees and roots to get yourself up the hills. Um, I really, we've only had, I think, eight front runs by five different individuals. All years, the women have just not done well. Yeah, so that's what Laz thinks. Um, the women have not done well at the Barkley Marathons, but to be fair, a lot less women enter the Barkley Marathons, so um, that may be why. Um, and, and we've just had a live comment here from uh, Sax Slicker who says, and most of the men can't do the Barkley Marathons either, so that's a very fair point. Um, just had an interesting comment here about Aaron Fraser, who was at the National Running Show. He said that Ultrazone was a bit too small and they couldn't hit, really hear any of the speakers um, and they were barely audible. Um, so I am very pleased to tell you, Aaron, that I have got an interview with John Kelly and Laz and Camille. So um, we'll get, uh, you can you can hear them from my channel instead. But yeah, I think that the organizers really underestimated um, the, uh, the, the power of ultra running right now. They really underestimated the popularity of it. So I think the ultra running zone is gonna be a little bit bigger next year, I would have thought, probably twice as big maybe. Um, they did even put Laz on the main stage as well. Um, uh, but uh, at one point, but I waited ages to get an interview with Laz. Um, I'll just show you, uh, here we go. I did eventually get an interview with him. Um, and, uh, also, if you want um, an interview with John Kelly as well, if you couldn't see him at the show, my latest film is about John Kelly um, and he answers the question, how does the spine compare, the spine race compare to the Barclay Marathons? So if you didn't get to see John Kelly at the National Running Show, then do um, check out my latest film. It's just the one that came out on Monday. So um, you will be able to see him there. And so this is this is Camille Aron, um, met her at the running show as well. Um, and and um, I was fortunate enough to interview her and I saw her at the after party as well. So that's uh, me on the left, that's Camille in the middle. And on the right is Anna from the National, uh, so, sorry, from the Running Channel, um, which is a really good channel. If you haven't already, um, if you haven't already uh, seen the Running Channel um, on YouTube, then definitely check it out because Anna's a brilliant presenter and um, they've got loads of tips and advice for just running in general on that channel. Um, this channel's dedicated to trail and ultra running, but they've got loads of, of general running advice on there. Okay, so, um, oh, Carol J says she didn't go, she lives in Newcastle, it's a little bit far. Yeah, they do need to have one like in Edinburgh or somewhere like that, don't they? They need a, like a, a Scottish one as well, um, maybe. Um, yeah, and so tell me in the comments if you're interested in running Barclay or not, because I am really interested to know if any kind of any of us kind of normal runners might do it. Um, I'm definitely not. It just sounds like a massive suffer fest. Um, I love to watch it, and I think it's a like the film that came out a few years ago. That was a great film. Everybody should watch that film. Um, I don't know if it's still on Netflix, um, but hopefully there's a way for you to watch the film. If you Google Barclay Marathons, the race that eats its young, that's the first film about the Barclay marathons and it's an excellent film even for non-runners like um there's so many running films that wouldn't really appeal to people who don't run but this one really really appeals to non-runners it's got a great storyline and that year amazingly three people finished the Barclay marathons usually nobody finishes or maybe one person finishes this last year nobody finished at all so um so yeah definitely um check that film out um and if you are interested in the Barclay um marathons then um then just check that check the film out um and also say in the comments below whether you would do a Barclay marathons or not okay so carol j says she's not interested in the Barclay at all there's not much running involved it's more like a bear grill survival show yeah i suppose it is actually yeah you see them on on the Barclay marathons and they're not uh running so much are they they're more like hiking through through the their really horrible mountainside and for me it's just like five laps it's five laps of 20 miles um one this way one that way one this way one that way it's just designed to confuse you 
you don't get any sleep. There is hardly any views. Um, th there's no scenery. Um, it just looks like a massive suffer fest. And I would rather do something like um, what I'm going to do this summer, which is um, the UTMB, the Ultra Tour de Mont Blanc. I'm going to do it over six days. So from the 21st to the 26th of August, I'm going to do the UTMB over six days. So you can join me if you want as well. Um, uh, I'll put a link to that as well in the description below. I need to make a note of all these things that I'm going to put in the description below. So Anna McNuff and also UTMB trip. Cool. Links. Just remind me there. Great. Okay. So <laughs> Florian K said, I'd volunteer to be the human sacrifice at the Barclay. Do you know what Laz said about that, Florian? Laz said he gets loads of people, now that the film's come out, he says that, because people didn't used to know that there was a human sacrifice before. So he said now that the film's come out and people know that there's a human sacrifice every year, he actually, if someone says, I'm volunteering to be the human sacrifice, he just like deletes their entry straight away. That's not a good way to get into the Barclay Marathons um, because the, the human sacrifice has to be chosen by him and has to not be aware that they're going to be the human sacrifice. So if you say you want to be the human sacrifice and you're trying to enter to the Barclay Marathons, definitely don't do it because it, it definitely doesn't help you get in at all. Um, uh, Chris Stringer says, was your mic covered in a part of Lazarus's beard? Yes, it was. I quickly snipped a bit off as he came through and I used it to cover my microphone, definitely. It's so funny uh, that you mentioned that microphone actually because whenever um, I film races and like there's a lot of um, dogs sometimes at races and if you ever go to film a dog um, and the, the microphone's there as well, the dog will literally just like lunge for the microphone and all you'll get in the GoPro is just like the, the dog's face just heading straight straight towards you and boof, it knocks it over. So yeah, the, the fairy microphone is um is funny. Okay, Guy Great Trick says, no, it's his idea of hell, no thanks. Um, oh yeah, and Florian K just saying, otherwise there's Where's Dream Where Dreams Go to Die by the Ginger Runner on YouTube. So that's Gary Robins, is that right? So Gary Robins is trying super hard to complete the Barclay Marathons. He hasn't been able to do it as yet, but um, he's got this massive dream of completing it. And uh, I think also, uh, 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 Oh, what's that guy called? Is it Jamil Corey from uh, the uh, Aravapai Running? I think he's got a major obsession with the Barclay Marathons as well. And he's not been able to complete it yet. So it's really funny. I think some people get really obsessed with it and they're like, oh my God, it's like a, it's a real challenge. It's a real, real conundrum in some people's head. And, and I suppose, yeah, that's, that's some of the joy of it, isn't it? Like the logistics, the food, the navigation, the, the whole, like the cult um, feeling around the, the, around the race um, but yeah I'm very happy to watch other people do it and I'm very happy to interview people about it but no 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 definitely not for me definitely not for me <laughs> um fab okay so I just want to talk about a couple of things more oh yes yes I need to tell you that I okay so I was hanging out all day basically for an interview with Lazarus Lake because I just really thought it was really important to to get an interview for you guys and guess how many minutes I got with Laz. I got three, three minutes with Lazarus Lake. And if anybody, any of you have ever seen Laz talk, like you can only literally ask him like one or maybe two questions in three minutes because he just goes on and on and on. So you have to make sure that those questions are really important. Um, I will be putting that out soon. I did ask him some interesting questions that he didn't get answered at the fireside chat. He didn't get asked at the fireside chat. So I just, I asked him a bit more about his own background and like where, whether he was a runner before and that kind of thing. So um, so stay tuned for that. And I will cut in, I, I did film some of the talk as well that he did with Bad Boy Run. Running, um, on the fireside stage um, so if you didn't hear that talk then um, then watch out because um, I did actually um, I filmed a lot of it and I will put some of the key points in his interview um, and if you're a patron um, you will get more so uh, if you want to hear more from Lazarus Lake if you couldn't hear him at the running show because you were too far away or you couldn't get to the running show then um, if you become a patron um, over the next couple of weeks I'll be editing a really really long um, interview with Laz that's going to be super interesting um, so if you would like to join on Patreon then you'll be able to watch it. <laughs> so, uh, 
Yes, and also if you want to um, watch Jasmine Paris's interview, um, I've put the link to that in the description below as well. So Jasmine Paris does say whether she will try, whether she would like to try Barkley marathons or not. So um, listen to that interview again very carefully for her answer on that as well. So what else was cool at the show? So it wasn't all about the elite runners. Um, I really, really enjoyed meeting um, all of you. So I'll just put this photo up again of all of us. Um, so yeah, so met up with um, Alex DeHoto and Guy Greatrex and Abby Norman and Nigel Barrett and, and Darren the Flapjack jo joins as we call him. Um, Darren always brings flapjacks to any um, wild, uh, any wild ginger running meetup. He didn't have any, to, he didn't have any over the weekend though. Um, that was an oversight, Darren, total oversight. Um, so we were in the trail zone, which was made by Jude Palmer from We Run Trails and I'll just show you that again because it was really cool. She even made this big box thing and and there's um she had a tree as well, a real life tree and um I was helping to take it down um on the Sunday afternoon. So you see that little hole in in there. That's where we kept all our bags and then there's some hinges there. So I I undrew, I um used the drill to undo the uh, screws for the hinge there. That was my contribution to the trail zone there. And I helped also take some pictures off the wall. Um and me and Abby Norman were uh, trying to get the pictures off the off the side of the wall like trying to um trying to pull this re-pull all the staples out. It was really really hard. We ended up leaving half of them on there. Who needs four staples to pin a photo to a wall? Come on, guys. And so, <laughs> who else did I bump into? Oh, yes, Mags McCarty. I bumped into Mags McCarty, one of my patrons, for the first time ever, which was fab to meet her. She's training for the Kate Rath Ultra, so good luck to her. Um, <clears throat> Managed to see Simon Gearhart again, only very briefly, because I was literally running. I don't know what I was doing. I was tr trying to meet somebody um, <clears throat> running one way, and I was like, hey, and so it was really nice to see him again. And John Earp as well, who was at um, the Keswick Mountain Festival. He did the 25K with us on the first ever patron meetup. Um, and Kate Shepherd came to my talk on the We Run Trails Trail Zone stand that I just showed you. Um, so, but I didn't get to say hi to her, but I know that she was there. So thank you for coming, Kate. It was really, really cool to have you there. Um, yeah, so it was great. Like people kept stopping me as I was running past to try and interview other people saying, hey, are you Claire from Margin to Running? And I was like, yes, I am. And I'm literally running to the next thing. Um, so it was really nice. I felt like a Z-list celebrity. So thank you all for saying hi to me. Um, and lots of people were messaging me as well saying um, that they saw me, but they didn't want to say hi because I was in the middle of something or I looked really busy or I was running. Please do say hi. I really like to meet everybody. And it just really makes my day when people come up to me and say that the channels helping them so please do please do come say hi um it's just really nice to meet everybody um so yeah I've got to speak to Laz for a grand total of three minutes and then what else did I do so I did have time to um to go and see this really cool stand um which was rerun so the rerun guys um are dan and charlotte lawson so dan's a gb 24 hour runner and they're both super into recycling and upcycling and and, and better still just not buying new things um the amount of hardly worn or never worn race t-shirts they had handed into their stand was absolutely unbelievable. It was like an avalanche of clothing. Like they were just surrounded by race t-shirts and some shoes, but mainly race t-shirts. So they have a campaign going to get race organizers to stop making race t-shirts or, or at least make like an opt out or an opt in option available, um, which is a really interesting idea. Um, because it's not just the fact that the t-shirt's being made and then never used and then kind of either thrown away or just put to a charity shop when, when, who buys old race t-shirts, not me if I haven't run that race, um, because apparently when you wash synthetic clothing like this, like what race t-shirts are made out of, then tiny bits of tiny, tiny microplastics, they come out and your washing machine filter doesn't filter them and they go into the water stream, you can actually wash them in a bag um, and that stops those microfibers getting out into and polluting um, our water systems and pollute and like being eaten accidentally by all the animals in there. Um, so you can get a bag that stops that microfiber coming out. But more, yeah, it's and you should wash all of your synthetic running stuff in in a bag like that. Um, but yeah, it's just she just wants to cut down. Um, they just want to cut down on on race t-shirts. Um, 
uh, just 100%. Um, so, um, it, very interestingly, um, the Lakeland Trails has just announced they're planting a tree per runner rather than offering a race t-shirt. So, I'm just interested to know what you guys think of this. Like, do you like a race t-shirt or do they go straight to charity? Do you wear them like as a pajama if you don't wear them? Um, like personally, I hardly ever wear a race t-shirt because they're hardly ever a woman's fit. So you're just wearing like a bag basically. And they're, so they just, I just don't ever wear them. There's two that I really like. My Kate Bath Ultra one, which is actually a cotton t-shirt. So it's not really a technical t-shirt. It's just a, like a top. And my um, Dead Sea Marathon one, that was actually really really nice but it's black um I, I don't wear a lot of black for running because often I'm in photographs so it's good to wear something bright and and also um if you're going to wear a t-shirt presumably it's a bit warm so you don't really want to wear a black t-shirt so I don't often wear a black t-shirt for running so that's why I don't make that but my mum uh, oh it's not in here but my mum made me an amazing bean bag out of race t-shirts and those of you who are familiar to the channel will know I've showed you tons of times before um but you, it's in my blog so if you google wild ginger running um race t-shirt bean bag then it will come up um so I'll just put a note um, to put that in the, uh, in the, um, uh, description below as well. Um, but it's really cool because it's a really nice way to remember your races. So yeah. So what do you think about race t-shirts? Do you think they're a good idea? Um, do you think they're, um, like, so they're so 19, 90. <laughs> um, I, yeah, it is, I think it is cool to have a race t-shirt, but I just would like to have one that actually fitted. Um, I do so many races, I'd just be overrun with t-shirts. So I think that whole opt-in, opt-out, or maybe pay extra for a race t-shirt would be a really, really good solution to this, this, um, this problem. But I interviewed Dan and Charlotte, um, from rerun and so you can see that interview coming out um at a later stage on my channel so stay tuned for more on how to recycle your gear and the pros and cons of of having a race t-shirt um they advise to sort of um gently suggest to race organizers that they could include an opt-out option for t-shirts for people who don't want them just to minimize on the waste um great so um uh glenn Badly said, um, we were one of the first in and got free running show TV t-shirts and the label said it was made from recycled plastic bottles. Cool, that's really cool. Um, and John Gardner says he loves the idea of planting a tree instead of a shirt. Um, or even a medal. After running for a few years, he has more shirts and medals than he can count. Yes, exactly. Time to make a beanbag, I think, John. Um, Aaron Fraser says he keeps some of the t-shirts from major races, um, but some of the smaller local ones, um, he rarely picks them up or he refuses them. Yeah, we organize a race. The Stanford Striders organize the 30K race. Um, and we always, always have t-shirts left over. And so I've got several of them, just like nice long sleeve tops um, from the 30K. A lot of the runners do wear them in all fairness. They do wear them, but you get a new one every year. So like if you do it for like 10 years, you get like 10 t-shirts. Nobody needs really 10 race t-shirts. Um, and Chris String says he loves a good race t-shirt, um, but what maybe once he gets a few more, he won't be so bothered. Um, yeah. And then this is interesting. Florian says, um, in Germany, he's from Germany here. Um, you have to pay extra for a race t-shirt during registration is rarely included. So yeah, so just given the choice would be good because then you can decide personally whether you will want a t-shirt and wear one or not. Uh -huh. And Saxica says, you can never have too many, you can, oh, you can have too many race t-shirts for sure. Yeah, I've got about 10 in, in a box upstairs waiting for my mum to make a new beanbag. You can also make a patchwork blanket as well. That's quite a good thing. Um, Guy Raytrek says he's not a fan of a race t-shirt. Um, he doesn't even like medals either, only a wooden one, a push. Yeah, that's an interesting thought, isn't it? Because aren't medals just as much kind of a drain on the environment? It's not really necessary. I get the whole prestige of a medal, um, but the, the medals that we're gonna make for our race, they're gonna actually be made of wood. Um, and I might see if they could be large enough so that they can actually be used as coasters, because that would be a nice thing to do, I think, as well. 
Um, and um, yes, yeah, so yeah, in a similar vein, John Gardner says a medal that could be used for something else like a wine bottle stopper or a glass or a mug. Yeah, like multi-purpose things would be really cool, wouldn't they? I've been to races where you get like a little half pint glass with the logo of the race on the side. That's really cool. And you use one of them for ages. It reminds you of the race every time you have a, a beer. <laughs> um, oh yeah, a little wooden fridge magnet instead of a medal. Yeah, or a magnet on the back of your medal so that when you're done wearing it around your neck, because let's face it, whoever wears it, around the neck for more than a day um like you could then just take the ribbon off and use that to wrap someone's christmas present and then put it on the fridge yes you could have a whole fridge full of uh, medals that would be brilliant this is a great idea okay like we have to write a rerun and, and get them to do a petition petition around that as well medals you could put your you could make your own metal um fridge magnet just buy um a magnet um, and stick it on or get you know get an old magnet from a charity shop that's gross like a really old old-fashioned magnet um and chip it off and stick it to the back of your medal and then put it on your fridge OMG, I need to do a whole nother series of what to do with your old medals once you're done with them. Medals into magnets. Great. Okay, right. What else did I have left to talk about tonight? Um, yes, something about April. Um, oh, yes, there we go. So we've done t-shirts. Yeah, I also want to tell you about two really cool people that I didn't manage to meet at the show. Um, and I've, I was trying to. I'm going to try and do this in five minutes so that I'm under the hour here. <laughs> um, I want to do a shout out to Alistair Jones, aka Running Mr. Jones on Twitter, and Rav Bilan, who works with Alistair, and she's also been doing a running streak for 700 days now. So Alistair makes these really lovely and insightful and uplifting poems, um, and he puts them on Twitter. Um, I really love sharing them because they're they're really, really awesome. And I've just written a book and I'm hopefully getting one of his poems to start the book. It's a poem about trail running and it just sums up the whole atmosphere and like the supportive friendliness of trail running in a poem. And I just think they're wonderful. Do look him up. He's just published a book as well, which has won at the at the running awards. Um, so definitely get that and give it a read. Um, and then I also wanted to find out more about Rav Bilan and her running streak. Um, and we have a phone chat scheduled soon. So so I'm going to find out more about her. Um, so I, I couldn't meet them because I, I was hanging around really desperately trying to get get this interview with Lazarus Lake. So I didn't get a chance to meet them. But I hope to meet them at the running awards this April. So stay tuned for more from them. And also in April, quick shout out if you haven't signed up for my trail running camp, which is here... Yes, trail running camp, it's in the Peak District, right? Take a look at what's on offer at wildgingerunning.co.uk slash training camp. It's for beginner to intermediate runners. And we will have a night run with silver head torches, uphill and downhill tuition and navigation basics class from coach Dave Taylor from Fell Running Guide. Um, there'll be a poles technique session from Lecky Poles, um, nutrition talks, um, strength and stretching sessions as well. Plus, I will be doing an exclusive viewing of my Cape Breath Ultra film. So sign up soon. There are three places left, but if we fill them, then we'll just book another coach and then we can get another 10 people. So don't worry about missing out. If more people sign up, we'll just book another coach and we'll just, you know, extend the group. We'll have two groups, you know, a faster group and a, and a, a less fast group. Um, so yes, and don't feel under any pressure. Lots of people have been writing to me saying, oh, do I have to be really good at running to do the training camp? No, that's the whole point. We're going to teach you how to be better at trail running. So we are going to do four runs over the course of the weekend, but it's mainly about like jogging to an area, learn like running up and down a bit, um, doing some skills work, doing some navigation work. So it's not like no one's giving you a massive beasting um, unless you want to. Um, but it's, it's generally just about being friendly in a learning environment and um, having a really good time. So um, I know a couple of patrons are coming um, and patrons get an extra special goodie bag. There will be a goodie bag for everybody, but there's an extra special goodie bag for patrons. So join me on that training camp. Oh, I should probably tell you the dates, shouldn't I? It's in April and it is from the 24th to 26th of April um, at Castleton YHA in the Peak District. And this is a shot of me running along from Mam Tour in the background all the way to Lose Hill. So we're just below Lose Hill which is what I'm running towards in this photo. So 
absolutely stunning mountainside just on our back doorstep, the perfect place to learn how to trail run. Okay, so finally, before I end tonight's show, I would just like to say a big thank you to all my patrons who support me. I could not carry on making all this content for free without you. So thank you so much. And if you're enjoying the films, then please do consider supporting me on Patreon because for the price of a cup of coffee, no less, you basically get um, exclusive access to our um, exclusive Patreon Facebook group, which is awesome, um, and then automatic exclusive entry to my monthly competition to win £400 worth of trail running gear. That's every single month, and only patrons get to win those prizes. I also do listen to you guys when I'm planning the content for this channel, So, and I also prioritise answering your questions both on Facebook and on stuff like this, um, and so you just get a bit of a chance to steer where the channel's going and be part of the game. Gang. So join us, join us. And um, and just to end, I would really like to say a big thank you to Guy Greater X for signing up to the coaching tier on Patreon. He is the first person to do this, so that's fantastic. Um, Guy recently did a night race where he pipped one runner to the post, and there's a really funny picture of him just like steaming through when this other runner's just doing this for his moment of glory. Fantastic picture. <laughs> it's in the group, um, in the exclusive uh, patron Facebook group. And now Guy is going to be training for the peak skyline 30 miler in August so do give him your support as he progresses with his training as he is doing awesomely so go guy go guy um and that is that is it I have managed to ramble on for um an hour now so I'm going to leave you to your evenings I hope you've enjoyed the live broadcast the questions at the start and then the little bit about the national running show at the end I will be trying to um cut the questions out so that you get these little snippets of of how to advice um little kind of two to five minute films on the channel as well because that's been requested um but yeah if you're a patron and you've got any more ideas or any any more um anything that you want me to cover on wild ginger running as we go forward into 2020 then do let me know but keep supporting the channel um keep watching my content keep sharing it thank you so much to everybody who recommends um my films to anybody who doesn't know them already oh and if you want a wild ginger, ginger running bath then i also have a shop so we can all recognize each other when we're at races um next race i'm going to be doing is the manx mountain marathon on the 11th of April in the Isle of Man. So Joss Naylor will be there to hand out the prizes. So if you fancy a trip over to do a really, really awesome 30 mile race over loads of mountains and coastline, absolutely fantastic race, then definitely look it up. It's the 50th anniversary this year, so they're going all out. So thanks very much for watching everybody. And um, watch again, if you're watching again, then type, I'm really interested to hear your comments on everything we've discussed here. So just um, write your comments in the, um, the YouTube uh, commenty thing below. and. I I will get back to you as soon as possible. Cool. Oh, I've just rumbled Guy Greatrex. He's just said he's not told anyone he's doing it yet. But you are doing it, Guy. I've, yeah, we, we've talked about this. <laughs> so Guy is definitely doing the skyline, this is the peak skyline. And um, and now I have launched it to every, I've, I've outed him to everybody, SARS Guy. Um, but yeah, you're gonna do it and you're gonna be fantastic. So don't worry about it. Um, cool, okay, thanks to everybody. Uh, oh, John Gardner says, love my wild ginger running buff. Where all the time on the trails and in the gym yeah yeah so there you go wild ginger running uh buff here you go yep uh yep get them at my shop wildgingerrunning.co.uk slash shop cool thanks guys um been great to see you and the next q a is going to be with a guy called bob diggles so bob has just launched a new podcast called the bob graham sounds so we're going to chat to bob about his bob graham about what inspired him to set up the podcast who his favorite interviewees are have been i think he's he's definitely interviewed nikki spinks he's also interviewed richard asquith off of feet of feet in the clouds so definitely join us next Wednesday um, to see, uh, to find out more about Bob Diggles. Um, and then, yeah, tons and tons of super guests lined up. Maybe I will, I'll tell the patrons um, who who we're expecting on the channel um, coming up so that we can all get our questions ready for them. Um, but yeah, uh, it's time for dinner now, everyone. So uh, off I go and uh, keep running. Um, have a great time. Uh, yeah, what do I say? Have fun. Enjoy your run. And I will see you on the trails. Night, everyone.